All right, this is Our King's Sons. It's the 25th of September. So we just come together to you, Jesus, through, through your door of your body and your blood and your life that was given for us. And we embrace you, Jesus. And we just thank you so much for what you did to bring us into heaven, to bring us into our home and into exploring and experiencing and living out of heaven and to being fully engaged in our true identity. We embrace you and love you and honor you, Jesus. And we thank you for everything you brought us into. Um, we agree that Holy Spirit's government is over our soul and body and is one with our spirit and that we're one spirit with you, Jesus. And so we come together and we agree and, and, and mingle together our spirits together with you and with each other and honor each one among us. And thank you that we're one together, Jesus. We, we love you and honor you for what you've done. We're so thankful. We deeply appreciate and thank you for the angels that are servants that we're getting to know. And thank you for the great cloud witnesses that are part of us that we're getting to know. And thank you for bringing us to our Father where we belong. And thank you for giving us Holy Spirit. <clears throat> through what you did, Jesus, so that we could grow from strength to strength and into full manifested sons. And we'd like to know what that's about. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we just have come to be with you and to have you show us and tell us what you want to show us today. So thank you. And we just remind everybody, please be free to share whatever you sense, and we'll grow together. Thank you, Lord. And just welcome someone who's recently joined. You're very welcome. And I'm not sure we greeted Frederick. Welcome. So I just sense we're in the river of life with Jesus.
Don't forget to unmute when you have something to share. I'm sensing it feels joyful and playful and light. I'm feeling like a tingle from the water, like um, an energy. I'm also reminded to go as, um, with childlike faith. And just another welcome. Welcome to Ashley. A lift along the edge of the river bank as the people who were in it have entered the river to go and join Jesus. And it's like they're shedding off the past containers or the, the holds that I'm presuming it's like denominations and things like that and traditions, but it's all piled up along the side of the river and it's just everything going into, the people going into the river of life there. Just leaving it. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, I choose to step more fully into the water. Let it cover me. Five seven zero six nine eight zero six seven five. Can we get your name, please? That's Georgian. Hi, Georgian. How do you? I, I, I just want to share something. Awesome. Uh, in recent in response to the first of all, I'm vibrating tremendously. Um, when there was mention of the barges and rowboats and the people um, had left them to go into the river of life. Um, when my husband first uh, passed away, I had uh, a dream where he was uh, making a boat for the unwanted children so that they could get into the river of life and they weren't afraid and they were joyfully swimming in the river and um, as it, it, she was speaking I had a, a vision of that a cleansing joyful ex unspeakable love washing all who would enter in through the tree of life wow that's all that's amazing. Wow. 
So I want to spell your name right. Is it um, G E O R G A N N E, like Georgian? It's G E O R G E A N N E. G E A N N E. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. So every time I look at the river, um, I just see the water is boiling, but not like it would hurt, but it just seems like it's boiling. I've, I've never seen it like that before. I was seeing it um, like ripples in the water and then shimmering light. So maybe that's um, that goes along with what you were seeing, Kathy. Yeah, because it's like bubbles kind of, um, but more like what it looks like when water boils, how it kind of splashes a little bit, like little splashes. And I feel like the water is warm, so probably that's what I'm I'm picking up, that the water is warm, and I feel heat all over me, nice, comfortable warmth, you know, and I think there are, there are, there are other beings in the water with us, because there's a lot of splashing around, it's like we are playing in the water like little children, and there are other people, other beings around, among us in the water. I can't make them out yet. I just wondered if they're fire beings. That's why the water's hot. Fire beings in the water. Ooh, that'd be good. Yeah, because there is fire in the river of life. <laughs> I always get excited if there's fire involved because really the concept of being burning ones really speaks to me. And I know that I've heard prophetically we we want to be increasing our capacity to, to carry the fire of God. I don't know if anybody said this already, but, um, you know, boiling water purifies and cleans things. I think we're getting a little bit of a glimpse into the manifested sons of God. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be able to handle the heat. Amen. But not only handle it, but carry it. See, I like that carry in that, um, the, um, the fire of God. Mm.
I hear the river of fire, a river of fire flowing in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if it, um, it's in the Bible like that. I don't know. Anybody knows a reference like that, river of fire? I guess heard that. Daniel chapter 7, verse 10. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. That's Daniel watching the courtroom. In Daniel 7 is the courtroom scene. Mm. Yeah, I have a river of fire flowed from before him. Millions of angels ministered to him. And hundreds of millions of people stood before him waiting to be judged. Then the court began its session and the books were opened. You're in the river of fire. One second. Go ahead, Georgia. I just wanted to share and go back to the shimmering light that you were seeing. And the Lord was just uh, speaking to me, deeply impressed that we are the shining ones and that we are the river of fire and the shining ones coming out of the Lord. Yeah, that's awesome. That's part of the manifest sun manifestation. So then is he speaking a greater manifestation of the shining ones? Yeah. That the glory of the Lord shall be seen and risen upon us here now? Mm -hmm. In the power of his spirit. And I'll um, you muted, patience. Hello, can you hear me? Uh huh. Okay. Um, I think I said I sense that out of our bellies are flowing the rivers of fire. Out of our bellies. Uh -huh. Yes, whilst we are in that in the river, the river of life, out of our bellies are flowing rivers of living, rivers of fire, and it's like um, God is using us to purify and to draw others in. This is why some of us were filling the fire in the river. And and we tend to think that a judgment, like courtroom of judgment, fire of of the Lord judging, we tend to think that is a is is a bad thing. But the word judgment is a, a means of assessing your stand, your state to be corrected. Not it's not always punishment. At times, it's even upliftment. So the fire doesn't come to like judge, condemn people, but to judge, assess you. 
that's my my understanding of it. Yeah, the fire of God purifies and frees us. Absolutely. And even allows us to come even closer to him, to draw closer so that we won't be consumed. This Daniel 7 passage about that river of fire had Daniel watching and looking and kept looking and observing and watching because there was so much happening. And I had the impression that this was the end of time judgment of everything that was that he was watching and observing there. But it was just like one thing after the other. And I sense the Lord is wanting to start giving us a sneak peek, a preview, or an idea of um, what he's doing and how he's doing it and going about it. So that we can even participate in it. Yeah, it's something like that. Because even in, like you said, Uganda in in uh, Daniel seven, starting at verse ten, it shows how many are with him. It says the river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him. A thousand thousands were attending him, and ten thousand times ten thousand were standing before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Ooh, I wonder if this is the court of 70. Yeah. Just a thought. I'm not saying that's God, just a thought. I think it's the really the big court, yeah. And it's interesting, it is in this season that they are going through those books in the Hebrew calendar between um, Yom Teruah, or Feast of Trumpets, um, modern name Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur. They sense that there's books of life of the year, of the scrolls of this past year being presented before God. And um, if he convicts them of anything, they need to repent and ask forgiveness, make restitution where they're able to, uh, because Yom Kippur, the New Year's book starts, the they're at the judgment seat and they get given a blank scroll for the year ahead for their life. Well, I really like that. Yeah, and that talks about an ongoing new beginning, yeah. not, not an end of the world kind of thing, as often has been believed, you know, that, oh, there's the end of the world coming, but it's an ongoing new beginning. It's a judgment to life. 
I like that. Judgment to life. Thank you, Jesus. And and I believe uh, uh, Daniel was told to close the books until the until the later time, which is our time, which is this season, I believe. So probably this is the opening of the books and the judging of the multitude so that they will see the judgment of life and step into life. Mm-hmm. 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 That should be the role of a son. Oh, I was just going to say that. And we carry, Hallelujah. Yeah, me too. We carry, that. we carry the judgment of life for people. Yes. We're to bring the judgment of life. Yes. Mm. And, and uh, Zachariah 3, 7 also is coming to me. And when, when the Lord told, uh, um, who was it, Joshua, that if you will walk in my ways mm. and if you keep my command, then you shall judge my house. Mm. And likewise, have charge of my courts. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a place to walk among those who stand here. That is sonship. Mm. What was that reference? Zechariah 3, 17. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, in, and uh, in the, in the uh, river of life is the book of, is the, um, the book of life, and everyone's name is written in that book. The only way it wouldn't be there if it was would be if it was blotted out of the book. So we 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 are seeing that we get to we're getting to be judged from life to life and to be judges who judge from life to life, who judge life, judge according to life. Yes. And, and, and the world is confused about judgment. They think yeah. judgment, all judgment is dead. Yes. And you condemned, you know, yeah. but God is giving us the insight, the revelation to know the truth and the truth set us free to go set them free. Even from the lies that God is judging them to death. Yeah. Yeah, and because Jesus destroyed death. And he removed the power of sin and death and, and came to give us abundant life. And so that's it. That's the judgment, abundant life. Hmm. Mm hmm So once again, we were shown that we are called to rule according to life. <laughs> and, and Michelle, I'm, I, I don't know, I'm putting this out there. I'm seeing that as our mandate for today. What do you all say? What you just said. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in part it's to receive it's to receive and we still will engaging in receiving and what that means for us as a group here tonight. But I think also it, as you said, it's, it's a mandate to, um, to embrace what true judgment is and, and release that. Yeah, because the fire is all about love and, air, and our judgment is all about love because everything about the, the, the Father, Jesus and Holy Spirit is all about love. Share a little story. My, my sister once was, um, she was in the car that the car uh, had a breakdown 
and my brother-in-law got out to try and push it off the freeway, off the lane, and she was behind the steering wheel, and a drunk driver went across three lanes and hit my brother-in-law, jammed his leg and that between it. So there were, was a whole you know story with hospital and everything, but then my sister received a ticket uh, to appear in court because she was obstructing in the, the road. And I saw her with such fear, and I kept saying, don't be afraid. She says, but what if the judge takes away my license? I said, you were not doing anything wrong. It's the drunk driver. But it meant nothing to her until she got into that court. The judge looked at it and said, they the victims, and threw the case out, and she was free to go. There was such a release and transformation of joy and, and everything. And then, of course, the judge dealt with the drunk driver to uh, pay the damages and everything for the car repairs and hospital bills, etc. But um, that picture remained with me about judgment is not always the bad. It's not finding fault. It is speaking a release, speaking that life um, that is there and a freedom. It speaks a freedom into a situation. And from your story, um, Elganda, I would even say justice. Yes. You know, that this ju judgment brings justice. Yeah. Which can be freedom and life as well. Yeah, it's all good and valuable and so important. And that story illustrates so well exactly the concepts I've been thinking of explaining about your story is, is makes it so clear that judgment is to bring justice. Justice isn't always to punish. Judgment is, as has been said, assessing or deciding or discerning and rewarding accordingly. And our Lord is loving and good and gracious and his, all his judgments and decisions are just and loving and fair. And he does reward those um, with life and all good things. So I, I was just thinking about the three strands of DNA of the Father, which is um, judgment, justice, and holiness. Mm. Um, so we can consider this DNA from tonight as well. Kathy, whilst we were talking, I, I, I heard the Lord, I heard, I heard the Lord say that he's covering us with that skin, with the three skins. He's covering us mm. as we are in the fire. He's covering us with the righteousness. Uh, no, with judgment, justice, and holiness. He's covering us with it. Yeah, good. Let's, let's receive it and put it on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm mm. going to put it on. Mm. <laughs> That's yes. great. That's the skin. This is the Lord's judgment, justice, and holiness. <laughs> well, the Father's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I especially feel it over my mind. Sorry, just to make sure I got that right. Is justice, righteousness, and holiness? No, it's um, judgment, justice, and holiness. Judgment, justice, and holiness. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Just a correction, and I know it's not something that we, I mean, it might have just been a word said, but I feel a correction is that God's Father's judgment is never bad. God's judgment brings 
justice and manifest the holiness and of brings, God. Yeah, it brings life. It reveals love. It reveals honor and worth. It restores. It removes the wood, hay, and stubble, and it brings gold and silver and precious stones. It brings out the gold and silver and precious stones and removes the wood, hay, and stubble. And I would agree that it's always good, but at times it might not look good. It might look like a dry season. But it is always good. Yes, never bad. So let's just keep looking to see and feel. And the Lord just reminded me it is always good because if we are guilty, the price is already paid. Exactly. So we don't owe anything. And if someone owes us, like, you know, what the thief steals, the Lord says will be repaid. If someone owes us, it's a blessing and it's justice that takes place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and the judgment and justice is so, that's so much bigger or so much more of a reward, if I can put it that way, so much more wonderful than what we could have imagined. And it, it, because of the nature of our Father is not, He doesn't give us just back what we, the, the exact amount. He always gives more than enough. He's always more than enough in everything for us. I see this justice is a, a big part of justice is uh, restoring honor mm. and it, it, um, it solidifies our identity and our value and, um, and even a dignity. Mm. So it's a, it's a deep setting of respect, honor, love and dignity and that we matter and that we're important and this thing has to have this justice has to come to solidify um that we are loved mm. Mm. so see that justice is very um deep and it's even an expression of love yes and i'm also seeing that the judgment came i mean at the judgment seat was where the father judged us free when jesus came back out of the grave and went into heaven with his blood the father made judgment what he had made it before the world began, you know, because Christ was slain for the foundation of the world. But in that moment in time when Jesus went into heaven with his blood, before he came back to earth, I just saw that there was where judgment was made by the Father. And, the, and if we just, just looking into different aspects as he shows that these things, he's, he's showing us what his judgment is like, that there he judged us restored into the fullness of our true identity in seats uh, with Jesus Christ as a co-heir. He put the ring, uh, the, the ring on our finger and he embraced us in fullness as sons. And his judgment even in the garden was not a judgment of, against us. It was a judgment for us when he said that that through, through uh, the seed of woman, the enemy's head would be bruised. 
and it was a constant expression of the judgments of the father how good and true and pure and exactly what you said Simone honoring and loving they are Yeah, that's just really standing out to me how um, when there's injustice, there's an affront on our value. And so a big part of justice is to say, no, this, this person is valued and they, it just restores us to our proper um, identity as one that's valued and one that's loved. Uh, I just see that very clearly that the, the, the enemy tries to use injustice to make us back down that we're not worthy or it doesn't, we don't deserve or we're, it doesn't require that these things are done for this individual. But God says, no, they do require that they are um, significant in, in not only what was taken away should be restored, but even more. So um, yeah, I think that's important. And, and it's a big part of identity and self-worth. That's what I see. That's just yes, Michelle. Uh, uh, Simone, I agree with you. Because whilst we're talking, what's, what's coming to me is uh, the devil tried to destroy who we are as sons of God. And God sent his son to correct that. Yeah. And through, the, and through the, uh, the justice of God in Christ and the judgment of God in Christ, we are judged as, as pure and true and worthy as we're supposed to be. We, we just have to align ourselves into it. So that we can tell that to others. As we drink of this river of life, go and let it come out from our bellies that others may drink and see that the Lord is good. Yes. So I would I could even I would even sum that up to say justice uh restores us to our place in God. In a nutshell, you know, it's a restoration back to where God meant for us to be. Yes. And that's very important. Yes. So thank you for saying that. I just sense the father when, when we was talking this last bit, looking up and going like this, like, come come closer like he's thrilled that we've got grasped that bit and it's the impression I get it's like you would take a little kid and say come and sit here on my lap and see how I bake the cookies or see how I do this thing you know uh, or how I make these decisions just come here and sit here and I will mm -hmm. explain it to you yeah but it's like he is thrilled that we've got this file that we've got this understanding and he will take us and explain more as it goes on. So we're all headed for the Father's lap, or already, or, or already there. Is that correct? Let's go sit there. If we are not, let's go sit there. Yeah, we're headed for the Father's lap. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I one, like that. Yes, one, two, three, in the Father's lap.
I sense him holding us in his arms. Wrap his arms around us or even lifting us up in his hands. When I sat on his lap and put my head on his chest, I was zoomed into him. Good. Okay. I was trying to work it out myself because it was like I was there near his right arm, you know, the place where Jesus had the wound from the spear. I was in that area and it felt like I was I was there and thinking of that and the next minute I seemed to be inside. That's it. You're sinking in, right? I felt the same. Yeah. And going deeper and deeper. That deep calls to deep. Yeah, I see his embrace draws us in. He draws us in. Takes us in to him. It's such joy that we're willing to be taken in. His delight. And I just felt like, let all my gates be open to the judgments of my Father. Because they're so good. And then my gates are not open to any false judgments. But my gates are all open to the Father for his judgment. So in my gates, I now see only the Father's judgment can be there in those gates. And I welcome the Father's judgment into my gates. Like Jesus said, I only speak what the Father says. That's how he got that, huh? <laughs> I was thinking of that, you know, that's, uh, that saying come to my mind, um, let him kiss me with the kisses of his lips. Well, it became like this, let him judge me with the perfection of his justice, with the goodness of his justice. Does anybody else feel that way? Yes, his judgments are good, purifying, cleansing, so that we can go deeper. I I feel that way. I I think. Personally, is because I'm standing on this shore. When I, I sank into him, I was like swimming to a shore in the water, huge water. And I'm standing at this shore where everything is different and new. It's like sinless, spotless. Sin can't be here. Sickness can't be here. Death can't be here. Like life abundantly.
And there's such safety in his judgments too. I feel the Lord's giving me clarity on seeing how all three work together, judgment, justice, and holiness. And I'm trying to just check with heaven for the right words to say this. Um, yes, his judgments of us are all good, but the concept of justice is different. And it's a concept, it's a big concept in the Hebrew that I have studied. And, and the sense of justice is, is that he's constantly meeting out justice and part of Jesus' purpose, the stated summary purpose of the Messiah is to bring righteousness and justice. And it's because of his holiness. The third strand there. And what I see of his justice is that he's constantly um, responding to our choices. And so there are the grand judgments that are judgment, judged and determined for us, but that justice is constantly being meted out in response to people's choices, which may or may not align with God's holy ways. And I hope that helps to draw a distinction between judgment and justice. And as I, yeah, and continue to engage with the three strands, and I know you'll be able to let me know if this resonates or what you see that helps make sense. Um, engaging with those three strands, and as we were in Christ and in the Father, I saw them continue to work in and through us as we'd received them into ourselves. They continue to work in and through us. And his justice also draws us to him. His justice is also completely good and for the purpose of drawing us to him. Absolutely. And it's so that we would know his heart. I really feel a deep heart of the Father in that strand of justice. Don't hesitate to unmute microphones to speak. I hope someone's maybe been trying to talk or it's just been a long silence. I just feel like I'm basking in his love and his embrace. Yes, it's good. His love runs deep. Yeah, but I'm, I sense him like washing away or getting rid of the tough times, the difficulties, the health issues that are in back. It's like I sense him, his love is just removing it, just removing it and washing it off. 
layer by layer. That's good. It reminds me of the full surrender we, we spoke of before. An openness to receive everything he would give us. Everything we need is available in Christ and here we are in him. It's a beautiful example of receiving all he would give us. I've seen the hole in a strand like gold, pure solid gold. Ah, uh, gold refined through fire, of course. I feel like I'm just melting into the judgments of the Father, just melting into his judgment ways and the substance of his judgment and his justice and his holiness. Anybody else feel like that? That's what I feel like. It's just that I'm in there. I feel a deep peace and um, also um, what's coming to mind is how we will be distributing this justice. And you know how, going back to Daniel seven, how that's where that's where my thoughts are going is how we'll be distributors of this justice. Mm. The, the Lord reminded me that Jesus said, "I never say anything or do anything that I did not." see or hear from my father. Mm. And that we need to be in that place that we don't speak unless he gives us the word. I think that's another definition or characteristic of a manifest son. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was going to say that, Simone. And, and the scripture says in Romans that as many who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Like you hear him, then you speak. You see, and then you manifest it. Which I think is specifically an oracle too. But not just an oracle, but I know an oracle does that. So now, what is the Father saying that we can see, say, and what is he showing us? That 
that as uh, as manifest sons we we um carry his justice and we bring his justice that's one thing he's saying i'm sensing that um the importance of of him judging or going through the judgment the process of all of our gates in him while we're in him mm -hmm. Yes, that we'll hear and we'll speak. Yes, I agree. And I also see that uh, the um, judgment, justice, and holiness all ending up as the love of God, the Father's love. Mm. Because in the end, we got into his heart. And that is where we really understood that the three type aspects of that love. He didn't just come, he didn't just send justice, uh, judgment, but justice. And also to transform us into his holiness. It's all because of his heart of love. Mm. What's being highlighted to me too is that um, this process of judgment is necessary for us for the river of life to flow through our gates from heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. as, as a river of fire. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Wow, we get getting yeah. somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. It's all together. <laughs> and and remember, awesome. our gates, our first gate is the gate of love, right? Mm. Yeah. When that's open, yeah. all the other gates open. We stand mm -hmm. in it. We let Jesus stand in it. Yeah, I remember trying, you know, going through each one of the gates individually and and giving them to the Lord um, to rule and and to remove all blockages and all that. But this is different. This just seems different to me. Yeah, it's a totally deeper level. Yes. The Lord told us that this new year, it's the year of the open door, we're entering at a deeper level, or higher level. Remember, we had the elevator. Yeah, yes. Okay, what's coming to me now is, what's, what's a focus to me now is that we are gates of justice. And I hear that scripture about how you can find justice at the gates. I mean, um, I'm sorry, wisdom at the gates. Right in the beginning, I was reminded of the letter of John where he wrote to the young men, the, the little boys, the young men, and then the fathers. And he was saying about how we are, we've all been progressing. And I think this is how this release thing comes because at the gates, it's the fathers that sit at the gates. They part of the elders that sit there.
I'm hearing, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Uh, Grace said in, saying in the chat, sing a huge sword with word justice piercing the earth. I think that should be our act for tonight. I think that should be our, what we, what we see for sure. And uh, before I read that, I kept hearing um, gates of justice, gates of justice, gates of justice. And the gates are open continuously and the, and the light shines through them. Amen. And the kings come to the brightness of the light of our rising. It was the judgments and the justice and the holiness of God is seen as it truly is. Ooh, amen. Amen. I got a big whiff of what happens when um, justice flows down from the Father's throne like a river. And um, how things will be restored and come back to, it's just, it's, it's like a reset. And uh, I just saw a quick glimpse of that. A big reset, if you will, but a reset meaning back to how God originally meant for things to be. It's about to happen. And, it's, and these gates of justice, which are us, is how this is going to happen. Reset with justice. So how can we put this into an act for all of us here to um, to wrap up? There was another scripture shared, but I didn't get it. I know this might sound strange because it's not what we have done consistently, but what I'm getting is that we would simply embrace this and, 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 and then see ourselves releasing it. Um, so that in a sense, it's not a one-off act that we're doing tonight, but it's an embrace of, a, a, an embrace to um, really embrace nice. the judgments and justice and holiness of the Father into all our gates and to, em, to embrace the fire of that flowing out of us. So that we would like turn together and just say, well, we embrace this and we've absorbed it into us. And now we're turning around and we're just, seeing ourselves releasing the fiery river, being the releases of the fiery river, and it, with expectation for the depths of these things to begin to, to manifest through us and in, in moments, you know, in, in situations, as if you can catch where I'm coming from. Yeah, that's good. I saw us all in a circle as though we were surrounding it in a sense to all embrace together. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's great too because whilst we're talking, the scripture that came to me is 
the desires of the righteous shall be granted. It's not always that you do it, even a desire can, set, can cause it to manifest. Mm. That's good. Amen. So this desire of justice will be manifest um, as we embrace it. Justice, judgment, and holiness. Amen. Yes. That's as we right. embrace it and then we'll release it and release. as a fi fiery river. Yeah. Like everlasting doors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So today we actually as a group are, are literally catching hold of this vision together then, right? Yes. Yes. Without yes. yes. Absorbing into our gates all the the justice and judgment and holiness of justice. Turning around and then yeah. releasing as a group this fiery river of judgment, justice and holiness through us. Yes. Amen. Can we see that? Is wow. Yeah, yeah, I saw yes. it. Yes. Yeah. It was like we became almost like a dam that broke and it just released this fiery river. Mm. Reminded me of some of those volcano rivers that you see in pictures. From <laughs> That's what I saw too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I saw that too. May 3. Mm. It overtakes everything in its path. Amen. Well, shall we just go over and trade on the sea of glass what we've actually been, you know, what we've received today and just trade it in to the sea of glass? Yeah, I love that because then by us trading in this revelation and this that we received, we received, we just trade it all in um, for more. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. So we just trade it in on the sea of glass. We just lay it down, and thank you so much for the revelation that you. Thank you so much for what's been imparted to us. We honor and. We honor you for what you've shown us and we are excited about being the manifestation of this and we just lay it down, Lord, and release it to you. We know we, we're not our own. Everything is yours anyway. So we just release it back to you, Lord. Um, thank you. Yeah, when, when we do that, I feel like this sense of like rest, it's like, um, you know, you can you rest in that and knowing that is done. Mm. And also, I also feel that in addition to what you just said, that when we do that, then we don't take any glory in it. Right. It's all his. Exactly. It's all for him. Amen. All for him. And it keeps us in that place where we're not holding on to something. We're just allowing it to flow out of us and increase like a circle that never ends. It's an infinite flow that continues to flow because we're, we're not holding it onto it. We're just continuing to let it flow in and grow and flow out and flow in. Yeah, that's good. All right, so I'm going to turn the recording off now. Good. I feel very complete. Amen. Amen.